Another Tom Clancy title I want to talk about, guys, that was something that was actually pretty close to my heart as a, as a game and uh, a franchise that I was hoping was going to continue into the future was Tom Clancy's End War. Guys, End War was a, a tactical or real-time strategy tactical you know game in which uh, was on, of course, Microsoft Windows and, and PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, and it was a game, guys, that was what had so much hype built. I remember back when it came out, there was just a lot of hype that was being built around this game, and then really what ended up happening was, guys, it was an ultimate failure uh, as far as like commercially, and uh, a sequel was being made, and then of course that ended up not going over well, as uh, of course the commercial failure that was End War ended up happening, uh, we ended up never getting a sequel. But I wanted to talk about where is End War 2 at this point? Is this a, a game that we could see a sequel of? Because what I think we need to do is we have to talk about what happened to end war in order to tell us whether or not we'll ever see a sequel so let's talk about it so guys uh tom clancy's end war as i said uh, was a game that was designed, of course, by Ubisoft Shanghai, and it was uh, a game that came out, of course, in 2009 for Microsoft Windows. And here's here's one thing I want to I definitely want to mention, guys, is that this was a game that originally came out in 2008, November of 2008, on the Nintendo DS, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Portable, and Xbox 360, uh, which why it came out on those and not on PC immediately with all these other platforms is beyond me. And I think that was step number one to this actually being a commercial failure because I think that with a game like this, that's a strategy game. We've seen other games try to do this as well, like Halo, Halo Wars. And uh, there's been other games, guys, that come to consoles that are trying to be a real-time strategy game on consoles, which is a great concept, great idea. But I don't think that it should only be on the on like on an Xbox or on PlayStation and such. Those games also deserve to be on on the PC and at launch, not necessarily months later. Because if you wait months later, it might be too late. And in this case, it certainly was. Look, guys, this was a great, uh, in my opinion, I thought it was absolutely a, an awesome idea of a game. This World War Three concept, you you uh, choose between um, your different factions and such. Very much so an Ubisoft game, very much so a, a Tom Clancy uh, game. And look, at the end of the day, there were so many really cool concepts here that 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 were that were within this game. Like, for example, the voice interface. So Tom Clancy's End War offers the player a voice interface. Instead of controlling the game via mouse and keyboard, the player may optionally issue commands using a microphone. The voice interface is made possible by a speech recognition engine supporting at least the English language. Official, officials at Ubisoft Shanghai said it was also possible to control the game using only voice commands. Jeff uh, Bacalar of CNET concurred, saying the demonstration he watched ran for 20 minutes without any perceptual faults. Hearing enemy soldiers communicate gives the player a strategic advantage to counter the enemy's attack with one of their own. Ubisoft has even created a video showing uh, parrots commanding units using their voice. So guys, that is so sick. You want, you want to know something like Ubisoft had this had this with, uh, with one of the Ghost Recons. I'm thinking it was Advanced Warfighter and you had this voice interface, but it's such a cool concept, guys. Like, how has no one else really done that as far as like a big AAA title having it where you're using, you know, voice commands and such? It's such a cool concept in the real-time strategy genre. It's just such a, it's such a bummer, guys, that this is a franchise or really just a, a single game that didn't get to coexist with other, with other games. But... We might not, it might not be all doom and gloom, guys. At the end of the day, there's always a possibility that these types of games may come back um, at some point or another. And I really hope it does because this was a very unique concept. And you guys know me. I'm a huge StarCraft fan. It's one of my favorite games all time. So obviously, any type of real-time strategy game that you have that comes out is something that I'm always interested in. And this was a game, guys, that I think was was very well done for what it was. It just didn't obviously meet the expectations of Ubisoft. Now, I think the marketing was incredible for 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 this for this game in my personal opinion. I thought I think it was they did an incredible job marketing. It just didn't hit well. Now, as far as the reception goes, guys, okay. So, 
and were received mixed to positive reviews. The Guardian gave the game a 4 out of 5. It was praised for its highly addictive solo play. The game comes into its own with the massively multiplayer online theater of war, while being docked somewhat for occasional voice recognition blip. The website GameTrailers.com gave Enwar a 9 out of 10, saying that it was console strategy done right. IGN rated Enwar as an 8 out of 10, taking marks away for the uninspired single-player campaign, but still saw it as a more than solid RTS. GameSpot's Kevin Van Ord rated the PS3 version of Enwar as a 7.5 out of 10, praising its innovative voice command mechanic and stating persistent online campaign makes matches feel meaningful, but berated it for its lack of story and simple rock, paper, scissors skirmishes. 1UP and Electronic Gaming both gave the game a C. So look guys, was it you know, perfect reviews? Absolutely not. Game rankings, of course, had on, you know, on each of the uh, scores for each of the different consoles that it came out on, 78.13 on Xbox 360, 69 on PSP, 77 on PS3, 60 on PC, and 70 on Nintendo DS. And the Metacritic, of course, had pretty simula similar uh, reviews. And look, here's the thing, is that, was it great? No, but were they terrible? Absolutely not. At the end of the day, guys, what it comes down to is the sales. A sequel to the game was confirmed to be in the early stages of development by Ubisoft creative director Michael DePlater in an interview with Videogamer.com. A small team from Ubisoft Shanghai is in charge of the development, he said, and is concentrating on two areas of improvement, single-player story and depth. He could not, however, place a date as to when more information on the sequel would be released. On February 8, 2010, it was announced the development of the sequel was canceled due to the game's commercial failure. On September 10, 2013, Ubisoft announced that Ubisoft Shanghai is working on NWAR Online for Windows and OS X, a browser-based free-to-play multiplayer online battle arena game, which was released in 2014. However, it was shut down indefinitely on October 31, 2016. So look, NWAR Online came out. And, you know, once again, just didn't didn't really meet the expectations, obviously, of Ubisoft. Now, here's my thought, guys. Uh, there's a number of things that go through my head. Obviously, you, you can say that it was a failure because it didn't sell enough copies. You can say that for a real-time strategy game, it didn't do well. You can say because it was a real-time strategy game, they had to pay more money in order to make it. And maybe that, you know, they just didn't think it was worth the investment as an RTS to continue onwards. But I don't think all is doom and gloom, guys, because look, they obviously tried something with End War, uh, having the, the, the free-to-play multiplayer online battle arena. But I think at the same time, I think what they need to do is if they bring back uh, End, Game, uh, or End War 2, what they need to do is bring it out on the consoles, but also bring it out on PC right off the bat. and uh, Or even make it a PC exclusive. It's hard to say, guys. I mean, games like StarCraft, you don't see StarCraft on, on the consoles. Now, I think it was a really cool concept, having voice commands and things of that nature. But maybe, guys, it just wasn't the right, you know, game for that. And maybe they just needed to kind of keep it a little bit more simple and kind of get people kind of at least in the door first. And then once, every, once it has a big fan base, then they can start really kind of innovating in ways in the future games. But, you know, there's a number of reasons, guys, why this didn't do well, I think, commercially and, and, and so on and so forth is, you know, probably just because they spent so much money on marketing, it was probably a lot of money to make the game in the first place, and they just didn't sell as well as some of their other IPs. Now, an article that was written by Jack Trumbull um, of Wargamer, if you suddenly won the lottery after going and buying yourself a new house and a new car and all the other necessities that come with being very rich, you would set out for the nicest restaurant in town and get the most extravagant dinner possible. You would likely eat there several times a week, having found luxury and savoring it as much as you can. But after some time, the food will lose its novelty. The flame of the yawn is not as exciting as the 15th time around. The lobster tail doesn't melt in your mouth quite the way it used to, and you begin to realize you've lost your taste for champagne. It is the following night that you would would go to dinner, not back to the nice restaurant, but to an old comfort, some fast food. And while in terms of quality, it obviously does not come close to what you have become accustomed to sometimes, some mediocre burger you get through a drive through is exactly what you've been looking for. Tom Clancy End War was, is that cheap, mediocre burger. Now, Tom Clancy's Endgame is a game that was both ahead of its time, but also a relic of a, a bygone era, a picture of a simpler age of strategy games coming to console. Shown through that Tom Clancy lens of intrigue, 
belligerent and global war. The campaign revolves around a three-way war between the U.S., U.E., and Russia, sparked by terror attacks that point the figure at the other two factions. And the real appeal, uh, really real appeal lies within these battles commanding your army through voice commands. Holding down sp space bar in battle will allow you to give orders in object verb uh, object form such as unit move, unit one, move to alpha, relatively simple stuff, uh, even 11 years after the initial release. But as far as I know, Enwar faced and still faces zero competition in the field of games that involve shouting stuff at your digital army. And they actually, uh, with, and they actually did it. If it sounds gimmicky, it certainly is. But being able to direct tank columns to intercept an enemy APC group, engineers to seize an objective and satellite to launch a kinetic missile at a, at a target is incredibly satisfying. And yes, you read that right about the kinetic missile. And we're teeters on that fun balance of military futurism and absurdity. So the me mechanics of the game should be familiar to anyone who has played an RTS or turn-based strategy game in the last 15 years with rock, paper, scissors formula of tank beats APC beats helicopter beats tank. So look, guys, at the end of the day, what he's saying is, is that this was a game that really had so many, uh, so much possibility and potential there, and for it to have just been uh, a commercial failure it kind of you it begs you to wonder what happened here and what I'll tell you guys another thing that that very well might have happened at the end of the day and we really didn't talk much about this but when this game released in 2008 November 4 2008 you're talking guys you're going right into a recession at this point because of the the stock market crash of course that ended up happening because of the housing market falling through and this was a time period where people were probably very cautious about where they were spending their money, and Enwar just so happened to be that AAA title that a lot of people decided not to buy. But could another chance of this game coming around at some point, that being like Enwar 2 or a free Enwar game, I think it actually might do a little bit better. The uh, beginning moments of a battle in Enwar are crucial to how the rest of the battle will turn out. This is due to several nodes called uplinks in game, but I don't like that word for this is... So we're calling them nodes that lay around the map. Capturing these nodes is an objective in, in most battles, and every node capture gives the player more points with which they can bring in more reinforcements. Even in the other battle types, destroying enemy buildings and killing enemy units, these nodes are crucial to success. Utilizing these resources costs points from the same pool reinforcements are draw drawn from, forcing the player to choose carefully. And at the end of the day, guys, Endgame is vaguely reminiscent of Slith Slytherin games in the structure of how the campaign map gameplay goes, but more abstracted. There are no buildings to recruit units from, and your army will always be at full strength. Any units that are wiped out in a battle will immediately be replaced by a rookie unit that won't be as good as whoever they are replacing. After you spend your time looking through upgrades for your units, generally things like an increased defense, longer range, or getting an active ability for one of your unit types, you're shown the campaign screen where you select one of several battlegrounds to fight at. And the game we deserved, but not the game we needed. Endgame was a pretty simple game, all things considered. Perhaps a bit too simple for PC. At the time it released, you could tell concessions were being made for the console audiences. It didn't offer a crazy revolution. The RTS and the battles are decent, but not fantastic. The voice command system is fun, but not exceptional and lacks some functionality a good mouse and keyboard can provide. The story is fine enough of a setup, but you're not playing this game for the story. You're playing it because it's cheap, because it's got a fun gimmick, and because it doesn't have too much distracting distracting you from what makes it good. Tom Clancy's End War is a fast food burger, and sometimes it's exactly what you want. So, look, at the end of the day, guys, this was a game that I believe had so much potential to be something really special moving forward into the future. And so where is Endgame 2 at this point? Well, guys, there's no indication that they're planning on making another Endgame sequel. However, if you're a big fan of this franchise, guys, you should do what I say to pretty much every community out there that wants a sequel made, is to tell the developers that you want that. If enough people are building movements around these games to get a, a specific game, whatever it might be, an Endgame uh, or End War 2 uh, case here, 
I keep on saying Endgame. I keep thinking about the Avengers. But End War 2, if you want to see that made, guys, you have to state that to the developers. And you got to build movements around it, right? And look, the thing about it is, is that you might actually be surprised at what developers will do when they see that there's a lot of people that want something specific in the community. End War is a game, guys, that should coexist with other games in gaming. It just should. It should be in the RTS genre. Now, should it be a PC game only? Maybe. Should it just be on consoles? Maybe. But I think that it, at the end of the day, if you want uh, End, uh, End War 2 to come out, it needs to be specific to PC. Uh, that's first and foremost. And then if it comes on consoles later on, sure. But make it specific to PC at first because that is going to dictate a lot of, you know, how difficult it is of a game and all of those things. And if it's uh, got it's got that appeal, then of course they can start moving around to maybe doing it, put, releasing it on consoles, making it a little bit easier on consoles or whatever it might be, right? Having cross-play and things of that nature, maybe making it free to play would be absolutely amazing. But let me know guys in the comment section below. What do you guys think, and think happened to End War, and would you want to see an End War 2? Let me know, like I said, and for more End War 2 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV.